Hey, welcome to the Hold the Line podcast. I am here. I'm so excited, guys, about this. I have the great honor and privilege of being with a great friend and hero, Mike Bickle. And we are inside of the International House of Prayer. Like in the prayer prayer room. room, Yes. Right behind us. It's Guys, this is a nonstop worship service that's been happening since 1999. 24-year anniversary coming up in May, yeah. 24-year anniversary. They haven't stopped worshiping and praying (laughs) since 1999, which is longer than a lot of you have been alive. Uh, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's incredible. And fueled by the Holy Spirit, fueled by coffee, I'm sure. <laughs> Lots. Lots. <laughs> um, but I snuck down here um, in between our Kingdom to the Capital tour um, because I'm so excited about this new initiative that I want everybody that's listening, I want you to get this. Uh, this is such a historic season that we're living in right now in relation to the end times, in relation to Israel, and I don't want you guys to miss it. So right now, turn this up, subscribe, share it with everybody that you know. This is going to be a literally a mind-melting time together, and uh, thanks for having me. Yes. Well, first, I want to say about you, <clears throat> I've known you and watched you over the years, and your boldness... I mean, you're a lion. <laughs> you're bold, but not only bold, you're clear. So some guys are, ah, but you're clear and it's relevant. And you're biblical. And the thing I love about it is your tone is kind. Because a lot of guys that are bold are a little mean. Yeah, yeah. And I don't mind that, but it's way more effective if you're bold, clear, biblical, and kind. <laughs> I'll give you one more, one more, you're consistent. <laughs> oh, thank you. No, and I appreciate you because you're an anointed yeah. worship leader. You could have so many more doors or so many doors just for your music. But you say, well, I want to do music because I love Jesus, but I want to do messaging because I love my generation. I love yeah. my nation and generation, but the messaging gets you in trouble. Yes. You could just coast on your anointed, mu- your famous music wor- worship leader. You could coast on your worship have big conferences and go home. You go, no, I want to take on the messaging because I love my generation. And you're doing it biblically. You're doing it with kindness. So I thank you back at you. Come on. Wow, that that really blessed me. Thank you for sharing that, Mike. Um, Oh, before we start, how about them Chiefs? Oh, you're doing okay, it. Okay, I got to ask you one You're question. You're doing it, way. I got to ask you one. Finally, gotta, you got it. You finally got the revelation. I got to ask you one question before we jump in. Is there any relation to this, the Bob Jones prophecies, the Chiefs, the anti like, it, give us just a tiny bit of that. Anything? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, well. No, Bob Jones, a prophetic guy who went to be with the Lord about 10 or 15, about 10 years ago, said 40 years ago. 1983. This is 40 years ago, guys. He said, when the Chiefs win the Super Bowl, I was his pastor 40 years ago. I was 27. He was like, wow. In his mid 50s, but wow. I, I always thought he was 70. When I was 27, wow. yeah, yeah. I thought he, when he had his 60th birthday, I was shocked because yeah. I thought he was 70. Yeah. Oh my God. Anyway, he said, when the Chiefs win the Super Bowl, blah, 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 revival, I thought it was stupid, just to be honest. So 40 years later, well, no, a year or two ago, they won. So there was a lot of hubbub, and I don't know. I love it. I love it. But, you know, I told our people, I go, don't get – I mean, be encouraged, but if every time somebody wins the Super Bowl, there's going to be a revival, then that means Boston would be the book of Acts. (laughs) I go, I don't think it really works that way. (laughs) But but the Lord is a poet. You know, he's not only a king and a nation builder – He's not only an architect and a musician. He's not only a mathematician, a historian. He's a poet, too. Yeah. So he does poetry all the yeah. time. Yeah. He does all of them together. Yeah, I love that. So love he, that. He, he was in some of that, but some folks took it a step beyond. And so, I, But I, st- I love the Chiefs, though. Oh, we're, we, we do, too. My kids, my family, they, they, love, they love Mahomes. They love the Chiefs. All right, well, let's okay, move on. Let's so, get serious. Yeah. So, <laughs> get serious. So we're here crucial time i actually walked in on a massive zoom call that he was having i crashed a party as i walked in here today which i love um so so share with us what is happening well i'll give it to you in one sentence we are calling people this would be a little weird to many many people because it would have been weird to me if i would have heard this some years ago we're calling we were calling a million people okay 
to pray one hour a day for God's purpose for Jerusalem and Israel for 21 days. Why 21 days in May? I'm not going to go into that. But there's a reason. And uh, we have a website where we tell the story. Some like the backstory. I'm not going to take time on that. 21 days, one hour a day. So the idea was a million. And we started March 7th, about six weeks ago. Well over 5 million people have set their heart to do this. Wow. F- no, five. Oh, my God. I don't even know the number. I quit counting at the 1 million mark. Yeah. I don't want to count anymore. We have a, a, a website called Isaiah62fast.com, Isaiah62fast, because we're calling these 21 days with some fasting. Some will fast a lot. Some will fast a little. Some will fast every other day. Some will fast social media. Fast the way you want to fast or don't fast. But we're calling it Isaiah 62 Fast. So we started a website. It's not an IHOP website. So it's not because the International House of Prayer, we have a website where we share our programs, our teachings. This is not that. This is too important for us to make this a ministry commercial. This Isaiah 62 website is really a directory of thousands of ministries that are saying, Hey, I want to be a part of this. I'll pray an hour a day with a few of my people, two or three or more, whatever. And therefore, they put their ministry information on the website. Why? Because thousands are doing this. Because we want people in their area and region to connect to them, either drive in and meet them or social media interact with them. So this Isaiah 62, why? And why Israel? That seems so weird to people to pray for Israel. Because I'm a lover of Jesus. I'm a lover of the Great Commission, the great billion soul harvest, the greatest revival in human history is about, is in front of us. That's what I'm locked into. Yeah. But what I didn't know is Israel's connected to it. And when I was a young pastor 40 years ago, when I was 27 and I met this man, Bob Jones, he told me one day, he says, you'll be an older man. That was 40 years ago, 27, I'm 67 now. He goes, you'll be a part of a a prayer movement with many, many, many others where a hundred million Gentiles will pray for Israel. I I thought that was stupid, to be honest. I said, number one, I thought the church was Israel. He said, you'll be in part of it. And he said, you'll have 24 hours of singers and musicians too. I said, that ain't gonna happen. Well, 16 years later, we started, which was 24 years ago. But he said, you'll pray for Israel. Nah, I go, I don't do Israel. I didn't tell him that. I just stared at him because who's this crazy man, you know, a hundred million. There's no internet. So there's no hundred right, million. Right, anything. right, right, I mean, right. Nothing is a hundred million right. in those days. Well, it's 40 years later. He told me, he goes, when that happens, you'll be one of the oldest men in this movement. And he said, your grandchildren will be in their strength. I said, my kids are age two and four. I don't have any grandchildren. He goes, oh, you will. Well, I have a 20 and a 19-year-old granddaughter. And they're entering their strength. He goes, and I mean, millions of Gentiles are beginning to understand the biblical narrative, the Bible story, the Bible purpose for Israel. I didn't understand it at all. Matter of fact, I was against it. Or at least ignorant and, well, kind of against it too, to be honest. And it took me a while. It inched forward and I went, Wait, it's in the Bible. I didn't know that. So when people come and tell me, what's this Israel thing? I'm for Jesus, the power of God, signs and wonders, the worship movement. I go, yes, 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 yes. Hey, what's this Israel? I go, give it a little bit of time because yeah. there's a lot more in the Bible. Right. And I'll just say this another thing or two, and then we can go in any direction you want to go. But uh, we've been doing IHOP for 24 years here. And many of you uh, might not know anything about IHOP, probably. Many of you don't. Some of you will. So 24 years ago, I resigned my church uh, that I pastored 16 years here in Kansas City. So that's 16 years pastoring, 24 years IHOP. That's the 40 years. And so we uh, use the YWAM model where people raise their own support. So they're missionaries, and they they have their full-time occupation. So we have 600 most are full-time staff. It's what they do full-time. It's yeah. their job, 50 wow. hours a week. Wow. Just like if they worked, you know, at, you know, at, at any other company. That's why we have 40 worship teams 
40 full-time worship teams because it's their full-time job. Because yeah. of these 600 people, about 400 of them are singers and musicians. Wow. Most of them are in their 20s and 30s and 40s. There's only a few. There's some old guys like me. I'm 67. But anyway, so we uh, started worshiping and 24 years ago. And like you said, every two hours we have a worship team come on the stage. Yeah. So they overlap for about three minutes so for 24 years the music has never stopped even one minute wow. the worship which i'm awestruck by that because i know i know how weak we are i mean we're as dorky and weak as ever people come and say that's amazing and i go well if you knew us <laughs> <laughs> you might say it differently <laughs> anyway we're just like you is the point that i took too long on that here's the point of the 24 years of ihop We've had near 25,000 people who have done this here in a full-time way. Staff, students, interns, many of them, they come six months, one year, two years, four years, then they go back home, some five or 10 years, whatever, near 25,000. Here's the reason I'm saying that. 90% of them that came here in the last 24 years have said, my church didn't do Israel. So I've had that conversation wow. for 24 years. Wow. Thousands of times. Wow. And I get it. And I really actually have mercy because 40 years ago when that old prophetic guy told me I would be involved in a prayer movement of worship and prayer wow. night and day with singers and musicians, I did not believe him. And you would be involved in a prayer movement with 100 million intercessors for Israel. I didn't believe Israel had anything to do with God's purpose. Wow. I said, the church is Israel, I said in my heart. So I know that journey as a young pastor, but when I saw it, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Zechariah, I went, wait, wait, wait. No one ever told me these verses. Yeah. And so these 90 minute, these 90% 90 of 25,000 people, here's the good news, that uh, they, uh, they see it in about an hour. It doesn't wow. take wow. days, it takes about an hour yeah. because my kind of uh, replacement theology, many of you have heard that term. Some of you haven't. It means the church has replaced Israel in end time prophecy, et cetera, et cetera. That's a simplistic way to say it. The church replaces Israel. The problem is theologians have the church getting Israel's promises, but never Israel's judgments or trouble. Wow. <laughs> so it's pretty one-sided. Wow. Isn't it? It's not entirely honest. Yeah. And so my thought is this. I'm making up these numbers, so bear with these numbers because they're not really accurate. I'm, I'm, if you admit you're making them up, you get to get away with it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really giving you the sense of it. Not, I'm not. This is not a data time. Uh, I'm guessing 500 or a thousand seminary professors who teach replacement theology. I don't know the number. How would I know the number? Over the last 40 years. These 500 or 1,000 seminary professors, really smart guys and gals, really smart. I mean, Greek, Hebrew, history, my, they're really smart. And they write these books, two and 300 pages, and they prove why the church replaced Israel. You know why the books are two or 300 pages? It takes that many pages to prove it because it's not provable, meaning the argument is so hard to understand that it takes that much time. You get about three or four verses that look like the church replaced Israel, but you got about a hundred passages you have to get rid of to make yeah. it work. Yeah. So that's why it takes a book 200 right. pages. Right. You got to, and right. a lot of these really smart guys, they just skip some of those 200, those couple hundred pay, uh, verses about Israel. One thing before I finish my point on this, these seminary professors, Many of them love Jesus as much as I do. They love the Bible as much yeah. as I do. And I guarantee, I guarantee you they're smarter than me. But that doesn't mean that they can take those 100 verses, passages, the number's a lot more than 100. You can't just dismiss them. Yeah. I don't care how much Greek right. and Hebrew you know. So, But here's right. the point. Here's the takeaway. These 500 or 1,000 made-up number, seminary professors, the last 40 years have hundreds of thousands of pastors have come through their seminaries. These hundreds of thousands of pastors, they can't really prove replacement theology. It's too complicated because it's not straightforward. That's why they can't prove it. Yeah. But they know their seminary professor thought they could. They got a book this thick. 
So these couple hundred thousand pastors, they're not really replacement theology. If they're pushed, they go, yes. Right. If you say prove it, they go, uh, right. uh, 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 they really can't. Right. They got those three verses that everybody uses. But here's what happens. Most of them are not true replacement theology. What they are is they are uh, silent, just silent. So uh, someone's been in their church 10, 20, 30 years, has never heard about Israel one time. Right. So the problem isn't that millions are have convictions that the church replaced Israel. Millions say, I just have never heard those verses over there. So in these 90% of 25,000 people, again, those are not exact numbers, in our 24 years, in one hour, we show them 24 verse, 20 verses over here. There's a couple hundred to pick from. They go, oh my gosh, my point is, the Goliath of replacement theology is coming down. It really is. Yeah. Because the millions that kind of are in that camp are in that camp out of silence, not out of right. conviction. Right. But having taught right. this for 24 years of IHOP, they changed over that quick yeah. because those passages are that right. clear. I don't want to take time here to give those passages. I, I've got a personal ministry app called Mike Bickle App. But forget Mike Bickle App. There are a hundred ministries. Just go on YouTube. Talk about Israel. There's so many good right. teachings out there. there. So many. There I do it, but scores of people do yeah. it. So don't, I don't care if you do my stuff or their stuff. Just so I get it. Because these hundred, these 25,000 people came and they didn't get it. Well, for the first couple of years, 40 years ago, I didn't get it. I certainly didn't believe I'd talk about it and pray for it. Well, little by little, I found those passages. And I went, oh my goodness. This is about the Great Commission. Right. There is something about God's blessing on Jerusalem and the Gentiles in the earth praying for it, engaging, that is connected to the Great Commission right. and the end time harvest Come and on. revival. So I get it. If you don't get it, here's what I'm saying. Five million people. Beloved, five million people. Way more than that, actually. For 21 days, Gentiles are going to pray one hour a day. Or they set their heart to. I'm sure we'll stumble. We, all, we won't do it perfect. We're humans. We're weak humans. But here's the point. You ask the question, why in the first time in history are five million people doing this, Gentiles? It's never in history has this ever happened. I've asked some scholars and historians, have ever there been a time where 10,000 born-again Gentile believers prayed for Israel for 10 days? They go, never. There's five million, actually more, for 21 days. It's, it's a historical yeah. radical thing. So you're 20 years old. Your church doesn't do Israel. You've been taught Israel's unimportant, but you love Jesus. You love the worship movement. You love revival. You love signs and wonders. You, you're in all the way. I'm telling you, as a guy that pushed back for a little while, an inch forward in those early days, 40 years ago, and then the last 24 years, Thousands say switch over yeah. quick because I show them those 20 verses, but I could there's a hundred I could show them. They go, my goodness. So I encourage you, say, Lord, I don't really get this. I don't know if I buy it, but I'll take a peek at it. Yeah. So go to Isaiah 62 fast.com. You don't have to fast. You don't have to pray an hour a day. But if you want to, and you want people to connect to your app or your ministry. Then put your information there so the people in your area, in your social media downline, it will grow. Talk to them in that 21 days, five minutes a day. Yeah, That's what I'm going to do. I'm on the Mike Bickle app, I'm going to talk five minutes a day from this prayer room uh, here for the 21 days. Why? I want the conversation to increase. Yeah. But I want to see 10,000 leaders talk five minutes a day on their social media. The, the footprint, yeah. millions will enter into this. They'll get the shock of their life. They'll find out that the Jesus that we love and who loves us has a purpose for Jerusalem related to us. Right. And just because your church didn't do it, don't be mad at your church. Give them a pass because I get why they didn't do it. I didn't do it. Just give yourself a chance. Yeah. Go to Isaiah 62 and check it out. But I, I think I think it's so important, like, uh, praying for Israel, like, even like you're saying, if you didn't understand it, you didn't grow up in that culture, like I'm a testament, you know. I'm a missions guy. A lot of you guys know that. I I grew up in the mission field. You're I grew a crazy up, missions guy. I grew up going to all kind of wild countries and bringing the gospel. I believe in the Great Commission, but it wasn't until I had that revelation, you know. And I'll never forget. <coughs> for me, it happened, and I just came back from Israel last week. 
And I always do this when I go there because this is what really rocked me. Standing on the Mount of Olives, right? Standing on the Mount of Olives above the Garden of Gethsemane and, and looking at the old city, the Dome of the Rock, looking at the Eastern Gate and having this realization as an American that grew up thousands of miles away from this place, that a real man is coming back to a real place. A real city, like, Jerusalem. Like, like it's actually happening, like it's happening. And I had this sense, and it, this is what changed my heart. Now I wanna encourage you guys, like this is the revelation that really moved me to begin to care for Israel, to begin to pray for Israel, to begin to believe for a great harvest of souls. Right now we're seeing, I think I think there's 15 or 20,000 messianic believers in, in yeah, Israel. Yeah, about 20,000 is right. It's unheard of. I mean, there was a few hundred in the 80s, maybe. Yeah, yeah, right. That's I mean, exactly it's massive right. revival happening right now among the Jewish people. But, but, but growing up thousands of miles away, standing on the Mount of Olives, and really the replacement theology thing, it's, it's, it's so... <laughs> It's so like America, like the, the entitlement that's in that, the, the, the pride and the arrogance that's in that theology is mind blowing. Uh, the fact that, that we as Americans can grow up, that first of all, the fact that we're grafted in, the fact that Jesus came to the Jews first, the fact that you know we have the whole Acts 16, them fighting and realizing, oh wow, Gentiles are getting saved. I guess they're part of it too, you know? Um, but but you have but you have this moment where you're standing there and you're you're realizing, hold on a sec, like this is actually happening, like in my lifetime. And then to understand that this is the first time that Israel is is controlled by the Jews, occupied by the Jews. It's happening in our lifetime. It wasn't even like that in Jesus' day. Yeah. And thousands of years later, we're living at this moment in history where it's like you know the tabernacle of david the restoration the the prayer the worship and the restoration of israel it's all culminating in our lifetime yes and and so <clears throat> my my uh heart with behind this and I, I want you to share a little bit more too but my heart is we got to get gripped with this guys we got to get our heads out of our butts americans do you have to pop above the, your culture and all of the crap and the, and the self-absorption and the entitlement that we think we're blah, 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 and realize God's story is so much bigger. Like God's story is so much grander. And, and, and I mean, America's not even in the Bible for crying out loud. Like there's a real place he's returning to. And there's a real city and there's a real people. And we're so privileged to be a people that are alive to be a part of this moment. And that's what grips me. Yeah, no, no, you're really right. You, you said it right. In the New Testament, in Acts chapter 15, all the Jewish apostles <laughs> got together because they were arguing, why should the Gentiles right. be included? Right. 2,000 years later, all the Gentiles are getting together. Not all. Why should the Jews be important? It's exactly the opposite. <laughs> it's it flipped. Wow. And, but there's real clear biblical reasons. Wow. Again, I don't want to get make this a teaching, but in Romans 11, verse 25, here's what Paul tells the Christian, the Gentile Christians at Rome. They're Gentiles. He goes, Romans 11, 25, he goes, I don't want you unaware of this mystery in God's heart. Right. Well, he said it stronger. I don't want you ignorant, but make me. I'll make it soft. I don't want you unaware. There's a mystery in God's heart, a plan wow. that you don't know. Read, read it, Romans 11, 25. He goes, here it is. Here it is. There's blindness on Israel, but God's going to use the Gentiles to wake up Come the on. Jews to the reality of the God of Israel. His name is Jesus. Gentiles, I want to use you to provoke them to jealousy. Now, Israel's going to be provoked to jealousy, Paul said. What does that mean? Israel, God, the Gentile believers, in, particularly in the generation the Lord returns in the most intense way, will have a relationship to the God of Israel that will make unbelieving Jews jealous. We want to know the God of Israel like you do. Wow. Why did God set it that up, set it up that way? Because he wants Jews and Gentiles to be a John 17 family together. Each of them are indebted to each other. Each of them are humbled by each other when the whole history is told. 
So the Gentiles, he goes, I'm going to use the Gentiles. They've got to do it my way to wake up Israel. When Israel wakes up spiritually, Jesus says, then I will come down from heaven. The second coming is actually connected to the Jews saying yes to Jesus. And the Jews saying yes to Jesus is related to the Gentiles standing for God's purpose for Israel. Yeah, come on. And again, that might be a brand new point. When I heard that 40 years ago, I, go, I went, what? Yeah. I'm just a revival guy. I like Reinhardt Bonnke. I don't even know what you're talking about. And so give it a little bit of chant, a little yeah. time. Just say, Lord, right. I am a little bit ignorant of this. I don't yeah. know about this mystery that you want yeah. Jews stirred up by Gentiles and Gentiles grateful to Jews for one happy family. I call it God's grand family plan. And beloved, you're part of it. It's yeah. part of the entire revival. So so I want to just hit on on one thing that I think is 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 fascinating. So you have this whole geopolitical uh ramification you have this modern thing you have you know trump when he was in office this what happened in jerusalem he moved the you know he moved the embassy to that jerusalem that's insane no. people don't realize how crazy that no, was no that was radical it, that's only happened by two men in history have ever moved the capital to jerusalem that was cyrus and trump <laughs> no in 4000 years yeah. of well king david was the first right. okay so maybe three okay. if you count david throw no, king david he counts, in there right? <laughs> yeah. i think yeah. he counts so you have this the the, the ramifications uh po, po, geo, you have the geopolitics thing you have you know, I was standing there on, on Megiddo, overlooking Megiddo, and we had this kind of funny interaction. Because Megiddo's now. Armageddon, just so Megimo, you know. Megiddo's Armageddon is where the it's where the blood will come to the horse's bridle. It's the anti. So I had my guitar there, and I was singing, "It's the end of the world as we know it," you know, and I feel fine. So we had this had this kind of fun moment. Wait, you know, you're, where we're, you're a glorious, crazy man. Go ahead. <laughs> I love where, it. Where, where we were singing this, but 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 help them understand as as the because now people are like, okay, we have this the transgender agenda. We have this attack on our kids. We have all this stuff. Maybe it really is the end times. You know, I mean, you've been beating this drum for a long time. How does Israel relate to that? What's the significance geopolitically? What's the significance for the church? Maybe just a couple See, minutes on that. Okay, real quick. Because, again, there's so much teaching that you can right. get on many websites. I do a lot on my Mike Bickle app. A lot, I break this down a lot, so I don't want to take your time right now with this but Jews and Gentiles were all equally loved by God we're all equally in the family of God through the blood of Jesus so that's real clear but every city and nation has a different calling America has a calling Africa you know Nigeria has a calling Korea has a calling and Israel as a nation has a calling that's different than well every nation has a, di a calling different than other nations so Israel's Nation, uh, national calling is really important, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that they're more important spiritually. They don't relate to the Father more than anybody else does. It's one family. Yeah, and, 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 and the Israel as a state is so secular. Yeah, oh, Israel so as a state, highest abortion rates. I mean, Tel Aviv is one of the most godless cities in the yes, world. Right, I right. mean, we could go on and on and on with, this, with the fact that the nation, secular nation. Yes. Anyway, sorry. Well, here's what, you, no, that's yeah, yeah. perfect. But Jesus, I'll give you just two minutes on this. In Matthew 23, and verse 39, you know, that's right before the great end time chapter, Matthew 24, the verse before. Jesus goes to the Sanhedrin. And he goes, Sanhedrin, I'm going to tell you something. You're not going to see me again until you with your mouth say, blessed is he who comes in the name, the name of the Lord, which means they all do what that meant. Psalm 118, that's directly, that's the Psalm of the Messiah. They got it. Sanhedrin, government of Israel, you won't see me again till you say Jesus of Nazareth is the Messiah, the Psalm wow. 118 guy. And they say in their heart, never going to happen. So Jesus dies at the end of the week on Friday. And so he goes, yeah, it will, because I've got a plan, 2,000 years unfolding, where I'm going to allow a scenario to take place where great pressures are going to mount up, but I'm going to have millions of Gentiles that stand with my heart for Israel. And you know what, Jerusalem? You're going to actually say to me, I want your leadership. Why? Jesus could come back and wave his hand and wipe out the government of Israel. Easy. 
He goes, I'm not taking over Jerusalem till I'm invited by wow. the covenant city. Come on. I'm going to only come yeah. in a covenant response to you, but I'm going to set it up for 2,000 years. You will say that to me, but I won't come till you do. And, and they're thinking, we'll never say to you, because yes, they will. And when he says, I won't come again, that means second coming. Jesus is not coming back until the government of Israel says this. The Sanhedrin modern day, they won't do it, Paul said, until the Gentiles provoke them and show them how important Jerusalem is to Jesus. Because wow. in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, verse 35, Jesus called Jerusalem the city of the great king. Because that's his city forever. Wow. When he comes back at the second coming, Revelation says it three times. The new Jerusalem is coming down to the earth <clears throat> to be connected to the earthly Jerusalem. That's why it's called Jerusalem, wow. because there's a eternal city. Wow. This city's... So Israel's important as a nation, but really, I don't want to minimize it. It's really the host nation to a city. It's really Jerusalem. But God has a covenant relationship with the nation, but the nation is hosting a city because it's the new Jerusalem, the millennial Jerusalem, the earthly Jerusalem coming into a convergence, the city of the great king. He will rule there forever. He goes, nobody gets to put Jerusalem away. It's my city forever. He chose the city. Then when Abraham lived in Iraq, modern-day Iraq, Ur of the Chaldees is what they call it, Genesis chapter 12, God told Abraham, go find a city. So he, he walked all the way over to Israel looking for the city. It was the new Jerusalem. And the Lord showed him where that city would be. So this has been in God's heart from before Genesis 1. Yeah. This new Jerusalem, earthly Jerusalem coming together, Jesus ruling forever. It's really important, yeah. Jerusalem. It's bigger than we think. Yes, 100%. Um, so again, Isaiah 62.com? Yes. Well, yeah, you can get it that way, but the real name is Isaiah 62 Fast, but okay. we got all the different URLs. URLs so if you good. do Isaiah 62, so you still smart. get there. <laughs> we you got, got smart people working for We you. got nine of them. Yeah, and they're all, <laughs> uh, we do, and they're all under 30. <laughs> of course, of course they are. So Isaiah 62 Fast, guys, this is important. We're going to get behind this. We're pushing this, and... You know, my encouragement would be, one, jump on this and, and, and get the heart of the Lord. Like, start praying. Even if you don't know, you don't understand all this, you, you don't get it. I think the best response is, okay, God, I'm an American. I'm a Canadian. I'm a Brazilian. I'm whatever. I, I don't even know anything about Israel. But, God, if this is your heart, start praying. And the Lord will begin to reveal, just like he did to me, just like he did to Mike, uh, his heart for the nation. And... Uh, also, secondly, you need to go. Like, we're going to be bringing teams over there. I bring them every few months. I'll awesome. be going again in February. Go with us. Join us as we take teams over there. Get your feet on the land. Get your heart wrecked. Um, super, super important. I mean, what a historic day that we live in. We can actually go there. Um, generations and generations and generations upon people never had that chance. So, right. lastly, what if you just prayed? Okay, okay. Well, I want to say this. I'm thinking of the, the, the guy who's heard this. He goes, pray for an hour a day. I don't pray for an hour a day for anything. So <laughs> I get that. Uh, I was that guy for years. I get like, <laughs> I love Jesus and I love mission, ministry trips, but I didn't like prayer meetings. And I didn't like Bible studies, to be honest. I love <laughs> Jesus though. And I love mission trips. I get it if you're that person. What you do, you don't have to commit to an hour a day, but just... Go hit some different web streams because a thousand different groups will be showing you what they're doing. And you just sit in your car with your phone on and say, hey, I'm doing it. And when they pray, just kind of every now and then say, yes, Lord, yes. Guess what? Yeah. You're praying. That is real. So don't think you have to come up with some great language. Five or six of you together like, well, we don't know what to do. Just put, your, put it on your phone and yeah. tap into other people. And so, Lord, I ask you to stir up this generation that was chosen for such a time as this. This is, the, I believe, the generation, the 20-somethings and younger, mm -hmm. that will literally see your return one yeah. day. It's very, very possible. And I ask you to stir hearts and take them inch by inch through this month of May and show them things that would surprise them and yeah. wow their heart. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. Good. I love you. Very much. Love you.